In this episode, we're going to introduce you to Jordan and Katie, the founders of Valiant Expedition Trailers in Wasilla, Alaska. And just so you know, we're not affiliated with them in any way. We just love what they're doing. And so today they're going to take you up a frozen river. They're going to take you to one of their favorite glacial playgrounds and just share with you that this lifestyle isn't just for the hardcore Jeep overland enthusiast. It can be done with families. It can be a great upgrade from car camping. They're gonna basically tell us why they got into it, give us a walk around of the trailer, show us some of the amenities, weight, pricing, and just the hard work and grit that is put into these trailers with lifetime warranties. So we're about to roll into it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, we post a new video every two weeks. If you wanna be notified, click that bell below. Let's do this. I'm Jordan, and this is my wife, Katie. Or should you should probably introduce yourself. And I'm his wife, Katie. We got into overlanding trailers really because I have this tendency to find things that I want and then make it because I usually can't afford it. We started seeing them when we were in Colorado after we graduated and uh, started to do more off-roading. We'd get into these forest service roads and see these guys pulling these homemade trailers and we were like, oh, that looks really cool. Started doing some research into it and found that it's actually a thing and that there's companies that actually build these really sweet decked out camping trailers. And we were like, that's something we've got to have. But for 12 grand or whatever, it's not something we've got to have. We refer to our trailer as an expedition trailer because it applies to more people. Mm. I think more people can understand the idea of like taking your trailer on an expedition, but don't necessarily understand what an overlanding yeah, setup is. Yeah, I feel like overlanding, you, you instantly feel like you need to be some hardcore, like, jeeping, I'm gonna go yeah. rock crawl. Yeah, and that's you need like, to... this trailer can go over, it can do that kind of stuff, but it can do your just basic, like, let's take the family out camping. The word overlanding seems exclusive to a certain group of people, but what I want people to realize is this doesn't have to be pulled behind some big jacked up rig. Mm -hmm. The first person who ever bought one of our trailers was pulling it behind a Subaru Outback. That's right. <laughs> so it's just a way to upgrade from car camping without yeah. going into full blown, you know, a uh, truck with a fifth wheel, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. It's just, you still want to feel the experience of camping, mm -hmm. um, but you, you're tired of packing all your crap into your car. Yeah. So you don't have to be towing it behind a big jacked up Jeep. If you've got a little SUV and you just want to have a little more room for you and the family or whatever, that's what it's for, ultimately. What I always hated about RV camping, especially growing up, is you get to a campsite mm -hmm. and then everybody instantly wants to huddle inside. Mm -hmm. and then you're just in a small room outdoors. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't change anything. Our trailer, aside from being able to actually get you to some really cool places, still, even if you're just at a campground, it still, still feels like you're camping. Yeah. You still have that full experience. Mm -hmm. I know growing up, my parents used to go car camping or tent camp, backpacking, whatever, and then they had kids, and then they bought a camper um, just so we could still go camping but so that they would feel more comfortable bringing the kids along. My parents were really upset that they had to buy that because I mean that was my dad's biggest complaint was all of a sudden the family would be inside instead of being outside so they had to like create incentives to get us to go outside like go chop firewood whatever. Yeah. Um, whereas if it's like this like you're still you're still camping and it is still definitely outside it's just a little bit nicer on basically every level. <laughs> but you're I love that outside. that's an incentive for you to go outside is go chop firewood. It was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> oh, I get to chop firewood? It was 100%. Like, my brother got to do it, and then when my brother got tired, I got to go, and that was, that was exciting. The best part of having a setup like this is being able to make sure that we can take the dogs with us when we want to go on a trip and not have to choose between the dogs and gear that we think that we're going to need. Um, that and just comfortability, you know, uh, going out on a trip and not waking up in a tent on the ground soaking wet mm -hmm. is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. um, so it just makes everything a little bit nicer out of that normal weekend camping trip that we would normally do. 
you get back on a Sunday and everybody's tired and nobody wants to unpack the car mm -hmm. and clean all the camping gear and stuff like that, you just park the trailer and you just deal with it when you're ready to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or just don't, <laughs> just the next time you're ready to go, if you packed up your stuff right, you just hook up to it again yeah. and off you go. It's so much simpler, yeah, and faster because all of their stuff is just in the trailer. So yeah. like if we were gonna go camping before, it would be like, where are the camp chairs? Where's the table? Where's the stove? Where's the coolers? Where's the- Sleeping bag. Canopy, sleeping bags. Oh my gosh, yeah, like putting- It's already in the, tr in the <laughs> yeah. tent. You unfold it and it's ready to go. It's Pillows ready to are go. in there. Pillows are there. Big plans for this summer, I think uh, definitely the Denali Highway is one. The Denali Highway has got a lot of really cool offshoot roads and trails that you can take and get into some really cool places. I'm honestly just really looking forward to when the caravans of RVs are out <laughs> from everybody from the lower 48 like that comes up and rents those RVs and they're like packing up all of the spots that we all like you to go to. Here just find my own trail yeah. and just yeah just blowing past them and finding my own place to go camp that's really what i'm looking forward to i would say just something that's been on my mind the most people who have called and inquired about it have been wives it's always a couple it's always the, like the wives and the husband come and the wife, like the husband looks at the wife and is just like, well, what do you think? And the wife is like, um, well, we're definitely getting The wife this. does the selling. I don't <laughs> yeah. have to do anything. The wife is like all about it. I can say why I like it. Just, I mean, like the tabooie tent on the top is amazing. You Wives like, are my number one salespeople. <laughs> they totally are. But it just feels like when you're camping, it feels like all of a sudden you have a home instead of just like, I'm cold. So our trailers all come uh, as a blank slate basically so it's the cargo compartment that you see behind me it's got the uh, exterior rack and it's just ready for you to deck out however you want it so heavy duty drawers are a really popular way to be able to access your gear uh, drawer slides out of the side door you can have drawers that slide out of the back and that way you can grab all your gear without having to reach inside the trailer um, and then on those drawers, things like uh, a refrigerator, a uh, DC powered refrigerator is a really popular item. I've got a Dometic dual zone uh, refrigerator and freezer. A drop down rear table, that's also a really cool thing for food prep or whatever. Obviously a rooftop tent is probably the number one thing to put on there. Uh, that's what really turns it into a camping rig for sure is the rooftop tent. It's been really good for our marriage. <laughs> Why? Not having to set up a tent with poles. Oh, yeah. Just really the whole <laughs> when thing. When you just unfold it. I can just plop oh on my gosh. bike and go for a ride, and when I come back, the whole thing's set up, which is great. Probably almost had three divorces over <laughs> setting up <laughs> tents. <true. laughs> so that's a really nice feature. Yeah. Yeah, keep your marriage together and buy one of our trailers. <laughs> There's really endless possibilities uh, as far as we can make fuel carriers, we can make jack carriers, spare tire carriers, awnings, like we've got the Batwing awning here that wraps all the way around the trailer so it gives you 270 degrees of coverage. That's super cool. I've got mine set up right now to have, uh, it's running a dual fuel generator. It's a 2000 watt generator, uh, runs gas or propane which I've got a camp stove in mine, so the propane bottle will feed the generator and it'll feed my camp stove, which is really cool. Did you mention the power pack? The power pack? Because the power pack is huge to me because it's like, instead of just having this box that holds stuff, which is really cool, but it's now that it has all the features that a normal RV would have because all of a sudden you have power. Yeah, the power pack is really nice. Two big 90 amp hour deep cycle RV batteries and it has eight switch outlets uh, on the outside of it. So you can plug in all phone. kinds of different accessories to it. Yeah, it'll run our refrigerator for mm -hmm. two days. But you don't um, have to worry about ice? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it'll run a standard like 60 liter uh, ARB refrigerator for five, six days on a single charge. Uh, it'll charge off of the generator if you've got a generator on the trailer. Or if you're at home, you just plug into the outside of the trailer because there's an outlet on the tongue. You just plug in right there from an extension cord and you charge the power pack uh, while you're sitting at home getting ready for the weekend. One way or another, we can usually come up with a solution to whatever it is you're looking for, whether it's custom mounts for something you've already got or 
you're looking for toolboxes on the side. Solar setups have been popular uh, with uh, with different people. Jerry can holders, yeah, things like that. That's been on almost everyone so far. Yeah. yeah, tongue boxes for storage. There's tons of different options. So every one of our trailers uh, comes standard, fully powder coated, and that color is something that you can customize too. Uh, behind me, the one that I've got is gunmetal uh, on the body of the trailer and then a hammered black on the uh, rest of the frame and the fenders. When I finish these guys, I completely strip them down to their most basic components so that we can completely sandblast and powder coat every part. That means we don't have missed gaps, uh, surfaces that don't end up getting coated that can then rust later. Powder coating can also be substituted for rhino lining. Uh, we can rhino line the whole trailer, uh, which Rhino Lining is a really strong bed liner product uh, that can just take a ton of abuse. The suspension that's on these guys is a 3,500 pound capacity uh, Timberin independent suspension system. What that means is there's no axle running underneath the trailer, um, which is huge when you're using it in an off-road situation because uh, you don't have anything underneath that trailer that can get hung up on rocks or whatever. Super strong. It actually gives you, I want to say, five to six inches of suspension travel. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, for, you know, huge rocks, you know, boulder crawling situations, but it just gives the trailer some cushion uh, so everything doesn't get all thrown around but you can drag that sucker over anything and it's just gonna bounce its way through it and uh, not get hung up. Um, the lock and roll setup is really cool. It is a 360 degree articulating hitch. So what that means is it's got a uh, latch mechanism that latches onto the vehicle side and it can rotate on every axis. So your trailer can be rolling over and over and over back behind you and your car Stay stays your car. <laughs> totally still. Uh, which hopefully doesn't happen, but if it does, it's not gonna come decoupled from the trailer. Um, the uh, pitch uh, can go way more than it would ever need to. Uh, so when you're going down a steep hill or climbing up a steep hill, there's no way for your trailer to come decoupled. Also, it's uh, a big theft deterrent because when you look at the lock and roll hitch on the front of the trailer, um, it doesn't look, nobody has the counterpart to it. Nobody's running around with one of those on the back of their vehicle that they can hook up to your trailer and run off with. The weight of the 452 model, empty it's about 980 pounds, and tongue weight on it is gonna be right around 120 pounds. It's light enough for you to move around on your own for sure, and it's light enough for most SUV type vehicles. 332 is our smaller model, and that one weighs about 630 pounds. And that one is more for towing behind your UTV, like your Ranger, Polaris Ranger, or something similar, you know, those utility side-by-sides, uh, or smaller SUVs. There's also the option uh, for an additional cost to uh, swap out our steel paneling uh, and diamond plate for aluminum, and that will save you about 240 pounds on the 452 model uh, and it'll save you about 160 pounds on the 332 model. Our warranty is a lifetime warranty for the lifetime of the trailer and uh, covers basically anything that's not due to neglect. You have an axle wear out or uh, your paint starts to chip or flake or something like that or your I don't even know. There's not much to break. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're they're Pretty relatively simple. they're relatively simple. A uh, latch breaks. Sure, we'll go ahead and replace it. Warranties are something that were really big for a while, and then kind of went away. Mm -hmm. And now people are starting to realize the value of companies that actually stand by their work. And that's what I really want people to understand: is I build the crap out of these trailers. <laughs> and I expect them to last. So I don't expect to have to do a lot of warranty repair, but I want people to know that if they have an issue, they can come to me and we'll get it fixed. And it doesn't matter if you are the original purchaser, uh, if it transfers ownership. If it's one of my trailers, I'll fix it. I mentioned at the beginning, pricing 
I forgot to put it in this video. I'll put a link in the description so you can go right to Valiant Expedition Trailers and check out more of their information. So how many of you have one of these Expedition Overland Trailers? Let us know in the comments below. Did you build your own? What one did you buy? Who would you recommend? What amenities would you add to these? Um, I don't know anything about these trailers. This is so new to us, but it is something that has really piqued our interest. If you're somebody like us and you're just using scamps or teardrops or other small trailers, is this something you might be into? We'll have another video out in two weeks as usual. Thanks everyone for sticking around.